But they came with one accord to him, and having made blasphemous, the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon the said day, Herod arrayed the royal apparel, sat upon a throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. You see this, it is a simple story, something that happened in the community. And then because Herod had been helping the community, giving them some age. They wanted to be at peace with him, and so they called him, they said, Please uh, come and talk to us, we will be submissive unto you. And then he made a speech, gave a speech, oration. And the oratory was so great and so high, and the people were so stirred up by the way he spoke. And they gave a shout and they said, This is not the voice of a man, this is the voice of a God. And he, he himself became inflated, elated, proud, exalted by what he said. They better be aware and beware. Be aware when people flatter you and beware of that flattery. Be aware when people praise you and exalt you above who you are. Be aware that is empty praise and beware of that pride coming in the heart. Be aware when you have done something great and something good because of human skill and because of human ingenuity and because of human ability and everybody is talking about it. Beware of the thoughts of your heart. I'm so great, nobody like me. That's pride. And God is going to judge him. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, we're told the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord did what? Smote him. And then what happened? Tell me out loud. Because he gave not God the glory, and then he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost. And then went to heaven. Where did he go? Can you imagine somebody going out of the house? Do this, do this, do this. I want to go and see these people. I want to give a speech to them. I'll come back in about two, three hours. And then he left gave that speech, great oration, and the people shouted, and then he said, ah, I'm great. When I get back home, I'm going to tell my wife, I'm going to tell all the people at home today, I became so exalted and so honored and so lifted up. In fact, the people said, they are giving me a new title now. I'm no more a man. I am a God. I'm going to tell my wife today when I get back home. And before he got back home, the angel struck him right there. He died and was eaten of worms. Instead of going home, he went to hell. Think about that. That's what I was studying. So that these studies will turn us around. These studies will change us. And will cancel and crush and destroy. And take away pride from the heart of man. In fact, the reason why God revealed that dream unto Nebuchadnezzar is so that he will hide the pride away from him. And I pray the purpose of God in teaching us all this will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And hide pride away from us. Now we come to chapter uh, 4, chapter 4, Daniel. And we're reading from verse 34, Daniel, chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 34, Daniel, chapter 4, verse 34. And at the end of the days, I, Daniel, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven. What does that mean? At the edge of the days. At the edge of the days. That means the judgment now had had its effect. What effect? Do you remember what you have been told? Look at chapter 4 of Daniel verse 16. Daniel chapter 4 verse 16. Let his heart be changed from man's from and let a beast's heart be given unto him. 
and it's seven times pass over him. The seven times are past now. At the edge of the days, look at verse 23, seven times. Whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Heal the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the storm of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a bunch of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it wet, let it be wet for the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the bees of the field. Till when? Till seven times pass over him. That's what it means, it at the end of the days. When the seven times have passed over him, look at verse 25. Then it shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make thee eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee for the dew of heaven. Seven times shall pass over thee. At the end of the day, seven times passing him over him. And then we're looking at verse 32. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee each grass as of sin, and seven times shall pass over thee. When you come to now, verse 34, and at the end of the days, that means at the edge of the seven times, what does that mean, seven times? Daniel uses that a word, or those words, times, times, times. He says that a number of times. And we know what it means because of the way he has used it. Let's look at chapter 7 of Daniel. Chapter 7 of Daniel, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall seem to change times and laws, and they shall be given unto, unto his son until a time and times and the dividing of a time. Time, one, times plus two, that's three, and dividing of a time, three and a half. Three and a half times. What does that mean? Daniel chapter 12, Daniel chapter 12, we're looking at verse 7. And I had the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river, when he heard, when he held up his right hand, and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, one times, plus two, that's three, and a an half, three and a half. You see that language, time, times, happy time. Revelation, reading from chapter 12, verse 14. Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. It tells us here, and, the wo and to the woman were given two wings of, of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. The same thing, time, times, half a time. That's three and a half. Three and a half times. But what will that mean? In Revelation chapter 11 verse 2. Revelation 11 verse 2. But the court which is without the temple, live out and measure it not. For it is given to the Gentiles, and the holy city shall, shall be tread on the court forty and two months. Forty-two months. That's 12 months, 12 months, 12 months, that's 36 plus 6, 42, three and a half years. That means then, three and a half times is three and a half years. A time is one year. Seven times, that means what? Seven years. Nebuchadnezzar, you'll be driven away from men. You'll be driven away from the throne. You'll be dethroned and deposed. And it is not that you will go to live in the yard, or you're going to live among the poor, or you'll be among the illiterate human beings, but those who don't have high position. You'll be degraded, 
below the level of the lowest man. You will be with the animals of the field, and then you will not even change your clothes. You'll be having that one single cloth, and then the dew will be falling over you for seven times, for seven seasons, for seven years. You'll be there. And then until, until you know something, the seven years will not, will not reverse the verdict. If something else did not happen, what is it that will happen? So that the judgment will be taken away. We're coming back to Daniel now. Daniel chapter 4. In Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at verse 17. Notice this. It's not just automatic. I mean, you know, it's been under chastisement now for seven times. It's been under the judgment of God for seven times. And the dew has been falling upon him for seven times. Why don't you, O Lord, reverse the body? After all, seven times have passed. There are two things mentioned. Number one, seven times. Number two, until you know that the Most High ruleth in the affairs of man until the two things therefore the seven years yes that's part of it but the seven years will not just automatically change the judgment if something else does not happen chapter 4 daniel chapter 4 verse 17 this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high rulers in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over each the basis of men. The there will be seven times, but after the seven times, it's not automatic you'll come back. After the seven years, it's not automatic that you'll come back. If Kadnesa, yes, we know seven times, that's a long period. How long is that? For 30 days into one month, you have 2,520 days. And if Kadnesa, there's no point just counting days. I spent 1,000 days now, 2,000 days now. 2,500 days now, it remains 20 days for seven years to be over, and then I, I, I spent 2,518 days, two days now, I'll be restored. No, the Padmesa, it's not just a matter of days, it's not just a matter of times, it's not just a matter of years, it is a matter until thou know that the Most High rulers in the affairs of men. Verse 25, in verse 25, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be for the beasts of the field. And they shall make thee eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee for the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee. That's one condition, till thou know, till Thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Brothers and sisters, will you please look up? And you, you know sometimes when God is rebuking us for something, when he's correcting us for something, instead of looking at our heart, instead of looking at our character, instead of looking at how we honor the Lord, until you know that the Most High ruleth, that the will of the Most High must be done, and that the will of man must be swallowed up in the will of God. We're only counting days, and we're saying, do you know now, I've been three months under this rebuke, I've been three months under this chastisement. I've been three months under this uh, correction. And look at the time is going. The time is going, but do you know that the Most High ruleth in the affairs of men? Are you giving the glory and the honor to God? And do you have a change of heart, a change of life? That's what the Lord is looking for. It's not just counting years and months and days. He's telling us in verse 26. Chapter 4, verse 26, And whereas they commanded to leave the storm of the three rules, thy kingdom shall be shown to thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. 
Nebuchadnezzar, this is the interpretation. Judgment is coming. You'll be deposed on the throne. And be gotten out of the throne. And then the Lord still wants you to come back. You know, it's a merciful God. He's leaving the storm there. And the dew is falling on the storm. On the, on the storm. Now you will come back. When will I come back? Daniel, tell me. I'm eager to know. After that discipline, after that correction, I want to know when I will come back. After that thou shalt have known that the Most High, that the God of heaven, and the heavens do rule. For start it too. And it shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be for the beasts of the field. And they shall make thee eat grass, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth thee to whomsoever he will. Nebuchadnezzar, when you come to the knowledge that this is of God, that I don't merit this, I cannot earn this, this is only God and the action of the Almighty God until thou know. Correct that mistake in your heart for yourself, for your friends. When somebody has committed sin, let's say the sin of immorality, the sin of fornication or adultery, and is disciplined, and then we are told, now go and pray. Instead of praying, it goes on into in that adultery, and you don't know, and people don't know, and then people are counting days, and they are counting weeks and months and years, and they say, during the time they have chance to ask any question, Sir, how long will somebody stay on that discipline, on that correction, on that chastisement? We know some people in our church who have been corrected and chastised. God is merciful and God forgives. And when God forgives, He forgets. When are they going to be restored? One year is gone, two years gone, three years gone. When are they going to be restored? Until they know that God rules in the kingdom of men. Until they know that the will of God is your sanctification. Until they know that without holiness no man shall see the Lord. Until they know that blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. Until they know that God is watching for their repentance and righteousness. It's not just a matter of years, of months, of days. That's what God was telling Nebuchadnezzar through Daniel. And that's what God is telling us. I pray we'll hear the word of the Spirit in Jesus' name. And so eventually now, he says, look at chapter 4, verse 34. At the end of the days, I, Daniel, I, I Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High. I blessed who? I blessed who? Did he praise himself? Glorified himself? Exalted himself? Did he remain in pride? No. The proud heart had been brought low. The pride had been crushed. The pride had been taken away. And now because that pride had been taken away, that's why God reversed the judgment. Let's notice that in our lives. When God is requesting something from you, demanding something from you, and he's saying, the bride and the privileges will come back. The throne is there. The kingdom is there. The privileges are there. The fellowship is there. Every promise I made to you before everything is there. But turn around and repent. And don't just be banking on when it's time, when the seed is taking long, then you feel so ashamed and be compelled to restore me to the throne. No, I bless the Most High and I praise and honor Him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and His kingdom is from, is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. See Nebuchadnezzar, a change of heart had come, a change of life had come. And he says now, now I know 
that all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time when I realized that, at the same time when I honored, extolled, and exalted the God of heaven, at the same time when humility took hold of me, at the same time when my proud heart was brought down, at the same time my reason returned unto me. For the glory of my kingdom and my honor and my brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my Lord sought unto me. You know, the Lord touched the hearts of those counselors. He said, It's time now to go and look for your king. It's still your king. And see what God did. Nobody even fought to take his throne while he became like an animal. God preserved the throne. God was just waiting, He didn't even replace him. He didn't even say now, hey, why don't you vote again? Why don't you appoint another person? Why don't you elect another person? There's no new election. And nobody stayed on that throne because God was waiting. Number one, seven times to pass. Number two, until we know that the God of heaven reigns. Has God given you a promise before? Has God given you a position before? Has God given you a privilege before? And then by pride, by carelessness, by sin, by evil, by iniquity, you lost that privilege. Don't say, well, it's gone. Let me just live the way I want to live. Let me just let myself be free and go and eat and do whatever I want to do. No. After all, he's still keeping that privilege, he's still there, but he's waiting for you. And he's saying,